Hey, good morning. 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show. I hope you're doing well. Today, for other priorities, took price in it because today's the day I got to make sure the kids get on the bus. I got to pay bills, so all that stuff I need to get done. And I walked the dogs today. My wife had brought home these little tiny pretzels, little tiny things. I mean, they're not even like my finger, they're little tiny things. So we're going to talk about user stories and how some teams like to break them up and to oh, like waterfall and what's the advantages and di- disadvantages and things going on when that happens. So we're going to talk about that today. I did bring my little whiteboard, right? I got that. I got all the dogs. Bubbles, you want to be in the picture? Come here, Bubs. Come here, Bubs. No, oh, you see a white dog. I know the white dog's here. And the brown dog's here. Brown dog's here. She just She's staring at that pretzel right now. And she's like, the cat's going to get my pretzel. And I'm like, nope, Betty. And I got Bubbles. <laughs> Bubbles. <laughs> Bubbles is not going to eat the pretzel. She's all worried about the cat eating the pretzel. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's Comedy Central here. You see, bringing bread, dog, and cat into the situation in live YouTube world. Is this bound to cause trouble? Hey, don't. She just dipped at her because she thinks she can, she's not going to eat the pretzel. Okay. Say, look at this. Look. Stop. Do you want a piece of pretzel? Okay. The cat's not going to eat your pretzel. There. There. You good now? All right. Good girl. Lay down. You can have more later. I think she's more concerned about the pretzel being eaten by the cat. Than she is about anything else. <laughs> she she actually nipped at her because she was good. She's worried about cats don't like pretzels. Daddy, Daddy, calm down. She's all worried now. Anyway, we're way off topic. Five a.m. Master Scrum Show. I am Greg Master Scrum Master and Agile Coach, and uh, we're having a little fun <laughs> every once in a while. I just want to see what happens. And this is our seven hundred fifty-sixth episode. Craziness in the Mester household here with the call dogs and the cats. And um, she's calming down now, but she's staring at that pretzel like there's no tomorrow. So let's talk about user stories and how some waterfall teams will carry over the waterfall thought process and design process into story creation. And, and we're going to talk about some advantage, disadvantages, some hiding of stuff in your velocity numbers that that occurs. So why do we talk about this? Because we want to talk about bringing value value to the customer without working crazy hours. Make sure we get home with family and friends, have a little fun with family and friends, and have fun in the office, right? That's what we want to do. She's so fixated on this pretzel. <laughs> She's worried it's going to run away. <laughs> Bubbles, I'm sorry, baby. Dog thought you were going to eat her pretzel. So let's talk about this. So I got a red pen. Where's my blue? Pen? Oh, there's my. Blue pen. All right, let's see. We got a user story, right? And I got the whiteboard, so I have to describe it for the podcast. Make sure we're good. So we got user stories, and you know how I am. I like customer story, right? So and this is where they get away from the user story. Oh, it's a user story. It's not a customer story. It should be a customer story. I'm gonna change it, to customer. Because when you actually say customer, you can't do this little subdividing. Because what the hell does a customer care about the design, development, test? They just want the product, right? So a typical user story or story, you know, it talks about what they want. They want to be what, and maybe even when. There's an implied thing we would like. If you prioritize something, you know. The prioritize kind of dictates to when. Not the actual date, but if you prioritize in a certain order, certain things happen before other things. So there is an implied date associated with that, and you can't tell me there's not, right? And it's cold here in Philly. That's why I got to wear extra extra stuff. And I don't have, I have since the fire, I got to get more clothes because I don't have any winter clothes. Anyway, so this is what happens when waterfall teams come over. Betty, don't. So teams say, well, I need to write the user story. So they'll do a write story. 
I'm going to write writing user story. So they'll create this writing user story. They do, right? Then they create, okay, after I wrote the story, got all my requirements, whatever I want it to look like, I will do dev user story, right? And then I'll do a testing user story because God forbid I started testing before the dev was done on the design, right? It's the wrong attitude, but that's what they think. De testing user story, right? And then I might even have a deploying user story. But you know what gets one thing that gets rid of that deploying user story at the very end is CICD. So if you have continuous integration, continuous deployment, then the de deploying user story goes away because it just sits in the in the cradle until it all moves up. And it just happens because it's been tested. It's got all that stuff. It's good. And then maybe there's just a couple of things you check to see to make sure everything's good when it goes into full production. So mo mostly we talk about these, the writing user story, dev user story, and testing user story, right? What, so what's the advantage? One, maybe you get some better requirements. Here's a disadvantage. If this is a two week sprint, and this is a two-week sprint, and this is a two-week sprint, you're talking six weeks, right? They give themselves six weeks to get it out the door. That's crazy. That's like a month and a half for a simple little requirement. What's supposed to be happening is all this is supposed to be happening under a two-week. Therefore, the smaller user story. So the what do you, you just – you break down all these things you want into smaller elements – for let's say I want to use a credit card and you write a user story for using a credit card. Um, you don't write a user story for picking information on a library, then put in the shopping card and then checking out and getting the address and then using a credit card. Those are all multiple different user stories because you do all that. Maybe it will take six weeks to get it all done. If you try to lay everything out, how it's all going to interact and everything. Here's the other thing. So let's say they have a velocity. This is this is how they scam everyone. They'll say this is, let's say, I'm going to use a 10 point. Let's say this is 10 points. This is 10 points. And this is 10 points. Right? So they'll say, hey, my velocity is still the same. But it's taken them three weeks to get there, 30 points to get everything into the customer's hands. That's not how it's supposed to work. And they'll do that and say, hey, my velocity is still stable. They'll take a story and they'll break it into a dev and a test so they can say that they're still working at good velocity. They'll break it in two and they'll put one in one sprint, one in the other one. It's a classic little trick that dev teams pull in order to make themselves look good on those all those org charts and everything like that. So an advantage is maybe you get some more details, maybe you get some more time. I would say you don't get more time. One other disadvantage that didn't write on the on on the things. What happens if you were to create in your system like a clone? They all like to clone things. Let's say you cloned. Let's say you had the user you, writing user story, and in that user story you described everything, and then this was a clone. The dev story was a clone. The test story was a clone. Okay, and then as you're doing your dev work. You get a requirements change because as the customer saw the work, they changed. So now you have to do manual update to that. So now you're doing more stuff. By having a single user story, single user story, all your changes are in the main story, right? But now you have to do multiple levels of admin. You have to update the writing story. Some people would actually go back in time and update the writing user story. They would update the dev user story. They would update the testing user story. And they would even update the deployment story based on whatever changes were discovered when the dev team was crafting the answer. What a waste of time, right? What a use, useless waste of time. So that is one of the things they do. They, they So that's the classic 
requirements traceability question has been plaguing companies and people for generations. I, and I actually say generations because I would say generations because been, I think there's people now that are coding or probably prior to my generation that were coding, right? So I'm going to say generations and generations before that, even the 60s. So this whole requirements traceability now comes into play. Well, now you're making all these updates. You're wasting all your time. If you have one story describes what the user wants, what the customer wants and not user, because that's what's allowing people to make all these little stories or user stories. Now I, as the tester need this information so that I could do this, see that as a developer, I need this information so I could do this first as the customer. I want to be able to use my credit card to purchase something, whatever that purchasing is. I don't care. I just want to buy something. Buy, buy, buy. Um, so, so that's what they do. So they create these little mini user stories and then they break them down even smaller, little pieces. And they're part of it got eaten by the dog. So it is what it is. And that's what they do. Um, Jerry, do you want to say goodbye? No, he's just watching the cat. All right. Well, that's what I had today. So be careful on this waterfall action of user stories which they really should be customer stories and if you call them customer stories they probably may they probably still do it what am i saying but it'll be less desirable because now you got so, so let's talk about some of the disadvantages one it takes longer to get what the customer wants out the door into production two you start playing this traceability issue with what's written in the description for the user story for the customer story three it's a hot mess right people just do it just to manipulate the velocities and things like that so it's all there it's all part of that that magical evil pill of the agile accountants to make them happy um, but if you just made one user story one customer story and everyone on the team worked on it. See, that's the other thing. If you all worked on it together, it gets done faster. It get, does get done faster. And it gets in the customer's hand faster. There's no reason why any user story can't be done in two weeks in, into the customer's hands. Unless your code is totally crap. I said it. Yep, I said it. Anyway, I wish you all the best. Have a happy day. Happy scrumming. Enjoy your day. Maybe you get some pretzels. I'll have to stop by the one morning. I'll get up really early and get some real Philly pretzels. And you can see what difference is. So that pretzel was just a little bit longer than my finger. I didn't even think it was that long. Um, and a real pretzel. Big. Anyway, have a great day. Enjoy. Don't forget, when we go back in the office, you got to get Philly pretzels for your teams. That's your job as a scrum master. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> the secret job that no one tells you about. Take care. Bye. And see you tomorrow. Bye.